So guys, just a quick, um, this is just a quick uh, disclaimer before the video starts. I was gonna have a clip on mic for aerospace and I was gonna be using my phone as a mic using voice memo as a recorder, but unfortunately my mic actually broke uh, while I was setting it up. Um, I haven't used that mic in a while, so uh, it's kind of my fault because I just forgot how to use it. So I'm gonna take it to the Guitar Center, get it fixed and all that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this interview. Um, I'm just recording this this clip about when we're about halfway done. So hope you guys will enjoy this interview. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Hey guys, Ethan, I'm here with another interview for you guys. And today I'm welcome to buy Aerospace, DC, DMV artist. And we're just gonna start up this interview. So what was it like growing up in the DC area? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, depends on the time period, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when I grew up, in the 90s, I grew up in Southeast, you know, Alabama Avenue near Iverson Mall. It was heavy, a lot of violence, a lot of, uh, I don't know, it was going to school at DuPont off Massachusetts Avenue. You know, the violence there wasn't as bad as where it was where I was living, which was at top of the hill at the time. Yeah. It was, it was just chaotic, to say the least. Yeah. So, how'd you stay out of trouble as a kid? Because, like, I know you grew up in an area where, like, you know, there was a lot of violence and a lot of crime. So, how'd you stay out of that? You know, just, like, keep yourself keep yourself strong, keep focused on what you were doing. Friends. Uh, friends that had similar interests. Because I got introduced to anime at a young age, you know. It, to me, it was music, anime, specifically Outkast and Jay-Z. It was a lot of that that helped. Mm -hmm. So, how did anime help you growing up? Like, what got you interested in anime? Like, like what was that kind of that spark for you that really got you interested in anime that really pulled you in? Evangelion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my bro was drawing um, in Ava, and I was like, what's that? And he was like, let me show you. And then I watched it, and it, like, fucked me up as a kid because I'm, like, six, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But it quickly became, like, my favorite anime. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Um, so, I know you're into a lot of hardcore music, so, and DC is like a really big, you know, hardcore uh, and punk scene, like especially in like the 80s and 90s, you know. Uh, how did that really influence your style today? Heavily. I love hardcore music. You know, I was heavy in the shows. I've been in a few bands as a drummer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's a high energy, high emotion, raw form of expression that yeah. a lot of other genres of music don't necessarily have. I mean, jazz, I believe, is probably the closest. Jazz and gospel are probably the closest to it. But, like, hardcore, punk, metal, and all the derivative subgenres are like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what's your opinion on, like, the rap scene in general, and I guess more specifically the DMV rap scene? Uh, people need to focus less on clout and more on building community friendships and like actually establishing relationships with each other mm -hmm. like i feel like everybody else everybody's too busy on this weird ass vibe where it's like oh if they see somebody that seems to be popping and they're gonna try to get in a crew to hop on that shit you know nothing is genuine nothing is built out of real exactly camaraderie exactly so i think you mentioned uh in one of your interviews that you have uh pr a pr um like uh, people who run your PR, and you also have uh, uh, some people in like higher places. But definitely, I've noticed you stayed very independent, and I was really interested. How do you stay independent, and you know, just like avoid a lot of, I guess I'd say the labels, you know, trying to sign on, and just like, what is your focus to keep staying independent, and how do you like manage your career? Um, I just avoided any signing of documents per se like uh i'll say like i'm independent like 100 yeah. percent. you know what i'm saying like i've i've hired prs it's like i kind of will hire people to do things for me rather than it be like all right i'm signing this percentage to you i'm giving this to you for you to do a work for me mm -hmm. i went ahead and just learned the business ahead of time i yeah. learned engineering ahead of time so mm -hmm. i can avoid a lot of those things yeah um you want to control your shit yeah exactly exactly um so I, I've noticed a lot of your music is really meaningful in that it connects deeply with who you are as a person. So 
um, you know, what is it that really drives you to make meaningful music? Existing. Like, I, it's like, it's like a mix of my own life and also wanting to help other people. Because I know, like, at the end of the day, like, I'm not the only person that's experiencing it. And there's a lot of people that don't know how to put mm -hmm. it into words. And I got lucky enough to figure out how. Yeah. You know? Um, how do you stay authentic? And how do you, like, um, I guess this is kind of like, kind of the same with the other question, but um, very, I mean, you find it really easily, you know, you have it very important to stay true to yourself. And, you know, would you say that is something important that all artists should should um, stay true to themselves? Or do you think uh, some people can create characters and, or should all music be really meaningful and true to the artist? I don't believe creating a character isn't you being true to yourself. If you, like, you know, actors, like take Will Smith for instance, he's played in Bad Boy, uh, you know, he's played in Men in Black, like he, Fresh Prince, like he has his own, like Will Smith has been able to harness, you know, the personalities of different people at any given time. Kendrick Lamar as an artist does that all the time, but it's still him authentically. So I don't, I don't think authenticity is necessarily linked to what type of character you can play. But I think it's more so like a, if you're talking about I came from the hood and you didn't, that's just not authentic. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so, you mentioned earlier that you were a drummer in multiple bands, and I know one of those bands was Louder Than Quiet. So, what? So, how did you get in that band? Uh, the guitarist asked me if I wanted to drum for his band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had some band issues at the time, and he was like, "Hey, you want to come from LA?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, "I don't know." And then I was like, all right, fuck it. I had some other stuff going on, so I was like, I might as well. Yeah. And um, so, I guess, like, going even further back, uh, how did you start playing the drums? I think, um, you know, a lot of people really have, you know, interesting backstories of, like, how, um, like, really, like, what got them into playing a certain instrument. Mm -hmm. um, piano. Started with piano and just kind of gradually moved into drums. Yeah. Like, it was always, it was like when I was a kid, like I was in choir, you know, at church. So music was always a part of it, but like drumming was the one thing that was like, oh, I can express this way. Like piano, you, you're expressing different things than you are on the drums, you know? Yeah. It's not just like beating the drums. You're like, every drum has its own tone. You can tune, you can tune the drums to a piano to give it a particular exactly. sound. Like, yeah. it's, it's some deep shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I played the viola when I was, um, you know, when I, you know, I just quit uh, a few months ago, but really I just think like, and especially with um, playing an instrument, it's really important, um, especially if you want to be a musician, having that musical background because it really teaches you a lot about, and I think like one people thing are, people are missing is music theory, like that. And I think you've touched on that a lot, like how important, you know, music theory is. And like, um, another one of my questions was, you know, like, how do you choose your beats? Like, I know you're, you're really into lo-fi, like lo-fi hardcore like your two main genres that you're into and like same 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 with me um so you know what's that process behind like choosing a beat or making a beat like where do you find the inspiration to uh make a beat or like what's you know like you know how do you choose your beats for your songs it's a mix like if i'm if i'm like just like scrolling through youtube or like Bandcamp or like just emails of stuff that people send me it's a different process than if I'm making my own beat. Mm -hmm. If I'm making my own beat, I'm finding samples, I'm listening to music, chopping things up. I'm like actually like applying myself to make it exactly the way that I hear it in my head. But like when you're scrolling through beats, you're hearing everyone else's ideas. Yeah. And it's like, which one of the, like, these ideas sticks out to me the most? Which one of these is emotionally grabbing me? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, this is sick. Oh, I could listen to this over and over again without words. Yeah. Do words come to this? Oh shit, words come to this. Does it feel good? Okay, and then yeah. I'll stick with it. Exactly. So going back to about you playing the drums, I, um, I uh, actually shout out to Liam for helping me with a lot of these questions. Um, you actually play. Uh, you had a drum part in the Netflix show Juanita. So how did how did you how did you get that? That's that's a really big opportunity. Uh, while I was in the band, we shot a music video with this guy named Scott Hansen, and there's a man there that was acting in the video named Michael. 
and he and I just kept up. And yeah. he was like, yo, you're a dope drummer, here's the part, I don't know if this works for you, and, I, and you should just apply. I was like, okay, cool. So I went ahead and I sent an email in the casting, and they were like, hey, can you come in to come? And I was like, I can't, because I'm actually like in the Midwest right now. And they were like, that's cool, like, you know, if you are able to send us something, like, you know, record yourself as an audition, send it in, we'll let you know. So I sent it to them, they were like, you're a perfect fit. Like, three, four months later, I was filming it. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so another opportunity you got, um, uh, I know that you got a promotion from Sprite and you did uh, some some stuff with them. So like, what was that process like? That was the fans. Like Sprite yeah. threw out a pitch and was like, hey, like, you know, we want to see what's good. And yeah. the fans were like, yo, stop sleeping. On aerospace. <laughs> and Sprite exactly. was like, all right, let's fuck with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and like, Going off with the fans, um, you uh, did a music video, I think this was a while back, uh, uh, Tarji P. Hennison. Um, you got a lot of your fans from all over to film that music video. And so, you know, like what was that process like, you know, getting all your fans together and like shooting that music video? Because I know it must be chaotic, like directing all those people. Actually, it's kind of like not even me who shit. So I put a call together and was like, yo, can I get like all of my more so like artists and friends from the area that I knew. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them responded we're like, yeah, we're cool with it, we can get down this day. And then we got there and my boy Jeff and my other boy uh, Edward and my other boy uh, Rico, and they all came together, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like, all right, we're gonna help you. And so my boy Jeff went ahead and started directing everything and like helped everything come together. So it was more so for me, just an idea, but they actualized it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I heard in, uh, you talk about in your 2017, uh, one of your 2017 interviews, about uh, you were on tour and you went out to uh, Utah for a show and, you know, the only person there was just one kid from Colorado and you did an entire show for him. And so what was that like? Just like, you know, you know, coming all the way out from here in D.C. all the way to Utah, like, what was that like? And then just realizing that there was just one person there. It sucked, because, like, well, it, 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 all right, so it was myself, um, Lucid Optics, um, Zach, and Nomadic, I believe, and we just did all of this driving. It was, like, a lot of just driving and a lot of shit, and then we get to Utah, and the manager wasn't there, hadn't done any promotion, so nobody was there, yeah. and... You know, dude is like, yo, what's up? I'm a fan. I'm like, yo, what's up? And gave him a CD and just did a couple songs. I was like, what songs do you like? I can blast them on, you know, yeah. on the car and I can just rap them to you. Yeah. So, I mean, you came all the way out here. It'd be, it'd be a shame for you to not get something. Yeah. Uh, I feel like a lot of artists, like, they really miss, like, I'm not going to call, I'm not going to point any names out. Uh, specifically, but like there's a lot of artists like, you know, I'll see people online, you know, like especially they I'll see videos of artists like disrespecting their fans and It I don't know. It just really annoys me just like especially just like it's really important to like stay connected with your fan base and I feel like that's something that like you really do a lot is you connect with your fan base on a deeper level than a lot of other artists Yeah, I feel like keeping it real make it so that we always have that level of respect like I know I know based off of how I am with my fan base, my fan base is gonna respect my space and my energy the same way that I do them. So it's not like I'm gonna have to worry about my fans coming up on me doing some weird shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's always that mutual understanding of where we're at. Exactly. So going off of uh, talking about performing, what was your like favorite moment performing? Like your favorite moment for many of your shows you've ever performed? It was my Colorado show. I'll never forget that shit. Like we, we got to Colorado Springs and, you know, a couple of people that went on before me and I went on and it like, getting a, getting a house with like 80, 90 people that hyped off of some lo-fi shit was crazy. Yeah. Like that, cause I, that was pure lo-fi era. That was all dreams that era. And like, mm -hmm. that was a magical show. Yeah. Like for real. Yeah. Like if I, I'll be fine, like blowing up and doing all of the big arena shows and all that mm -hmm. if at least once a run of shows I can do one intimate show 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like, all right, how many people get in here? 150? That's fine. Like, yeah. I, that's, that's it. Yeah. I really, and I, I, I totally connect with you on that because, like, I've been to a lot of underground shows. Like, I'm, I'm from the Detroit area hey, in Michigan. Yeah. Shout out Mike Melano yeah. on my OG. Yeah. Hey. So, I'm from the, you know, Detroit area in Michigan, and so I go to a lot of the, sh the shows, and, like, one of my, like, my favorite venue of all is The Shelter. And the shelter really is, um, I feel like one of those venues where it, I mean, it's the cool thing about it is it's underground. And so it's underground of, uh, St. Andrews, which used to be an old church. So, so the shelter is underground. It's like the whole theme is just like, you know, like nuclear, you know, bomb shelter. And, you know, it's like really, you get to be really intimate with the artists. And I've seen uh, two shows there. I've seen Scar Lord. And then I'm seeing Gucci Highwaters. Uh, it was it was three it was a three person show. It's Gucci Highwaters, Smart Death, and Lil Lotus. So uh, you know, just like you know, I got to meet Lil Lotus. Um, so that was really cool. I just feel like those smaller venue shows are like really important. And another thing about the Shelter is that they actually feature in the movie Eight Mile because that's where Eminem was uh, rap battling oh. back in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> that, History. Yeah, that's that's where he got his whole start was uh, rap battling at the shelter. That's tight. Yeah, <laughs> that's sick. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um. So you've talked a lot about in your music about working at Walmart and how that's influenced your artistry. And so, like, how how did um, you know, that job really influence the person and the artist you are today? Hey, first and foremost, fuck Walmart. All right, <laughs> just just put that out there. Fuck Walmart. Yeah. Um, but the, <laughs> the people there, it's like you get, you get people with hopes, dreams, lack thereof, all meshed together. Exactly. And what I was, I was working the cap three shift, I was throwing boxes and we just talked and just connected. And it was like, there's, it, there was just. There was just this really human understanding of where we all were, mm -hmm. regardless of what we did. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people sucked, obviously. Yeah. But it was like, oh, what did you want to do? Oh, you used to, like, uh, my, my shift manager, uh, Joe, he was a musician for, like, he bought his first house off of doing music. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and yeah. the whole time I'm like, yo, like you gotta get back into that. And he's like, you know, I've been doing this for like 30 years, and I'm just like, but what do you want to do? And he's like, I just wanted, I just want to retire and go back to drumming and playing music and have my shit. Like I've done my deeds, I've hurt my shit, my band broke up, we weren't able to do what we wanted, and I quit and I shouldn't have. But it was just things like that and people that I met yeah. that kind of put me in a space where it's like. They didn't make me feel like I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, like, why are you here? Like, do what you got to do here and then leave. Yeah, exactly. You know? it, it, it helped. It motivated. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. definitely motivated for me at the time. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like, and I guess going off of that, like, what do you think is your next step? Like, you just dropped your album, uh, Sorry, Sorry to Bother You, so... You know you're definitely you know really coming up in the scene and so like what do you think is your next step uh in the game like what like what's the next thing you want to accomplish right now um honestly like once i get to the once i'm at the point where i can focus solely on making music then i can do all the things that i'm dreaming right now i'm just doing bits and pieces of my overall vision exactly. so 2020 for me is to place myself in a more comfortable space, you know, get a, get a couple of awards, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and have an established uh, hub and foundation from where I could work out of, you know, I think that's really the most important. And, you know, as long as I'm able to just be, man, I just want XO to eat, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just want us to, to do what we need to do and really get out here for the fans and for the, for the homies and take care of the fam, you feel me? Yeah. Exactly. Um, you were talking a lot about in the beginning of the interview how uh, you know your family was like very heavily religious, and so did you ever feel you had to like hide your music growing up? Did you ever have to like uh, you know like you know like what was that religious impact on you 
uh, as a person. Yeah, fuck religion. <laughs> like, and this isn't to say like everybody is allowed to believe whatever they believe, and it, and it's beautiful in its own respects. You know what I'm saying? But like, as in in specifically Christianity. Yeah. Fuck Christianity. Yeah. Um, and for me, it just it was a lot of a lot of control, a lot of abuse, a lot of breaking my Outkast CDs, my Eminem CDs, my Jay Z CDs. Yeah. God, 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 God. Nothing else, no thinking, no existing, no being anything but what this book says. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just, it tore me down. Cause mm -hmm. I like, you know what I'm saying? My stepmom didn't want me to. She was like, this is secular music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm yeah. recording in like 17, 18, 19. And she's like, oh, what? this is secular music. This isn't about God. I can't support this. And I'm like, yeah. all right, mom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, with a lot with religion, it's like, you know, it can go either one or two ways, you know, it can either inspire people or it can hold people back and tear people down because, you know, I mean, I was baptized Lutheran uh, mm -hmm. only a few years ago. I chose to put myself in the position of going to church and going to, uh, you know, I went, I went through three years of confirmation. I got my... I got my confirmation with the uh, uh, Evang Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Wow. And so I did all that, and what it really taught me was, you know, there are some aspects of Christianity I like, you know, like, you know, like a lot of, like, the good values of, like, you know, like treating, you know, like treating your neighbor kindly, you know, or like giving to those who are less fortunate, you know, a lot of those good values. Truly. But I found that with religion is that, you know, even though, you know, it's all about God. Like, it's God, God, God. Like, what you were saying, it's so focused around God is that, you know, I don't want to be selfish or, like, put down, you know, people want to, you know, I really believe, you know, people can worship whatever they want to worship. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. But, you know, to force that upon others is, I feel like, wrong, you know? I feel like... I feel like that's evil. Yeah, that that's, that's that in that way, it's satanic. It's, that is pure evil and I feel like if Jesus was alive today he wouldn't want people to be forced on a religion I feel like he would want it to be a choice you know and that's really what it should be it should be a choice on whether to be religious or not you know contrary to popular belief Satanism is actually about the freedom of choice yeah exactly sorry sorry about that I didn't mean to oh no it's yeah, cool yeah I didn't mean to put that in yeah it, yeah you're right I forgot about that yeah and like yeah Satanism and like especially you know, I feel like, and I feel like another thing about, um, you know, with like the whole religious community is that it's a lot of not understanding of what, you know, what's different. You know, people are scared of change. And I feel like that's, yeah, yeah people are scared of change. Yeah. And that really, to me, is, um, you know, really what drives hate is that people, you know, are scared of what they don't know about. And, you know, I think it's really important to educate ourselves on, you know, different things because, you know, without, you know, without knowing, you know, we fear what we don't know. Join No Names Book Club if you don't know shit. It's rapper No Name. She has a book club. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know about that. Exactly. Yeah, shout to No Name. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love her music. Yeah. Join the book club and educate yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, you know... I think you talked a lot about, you know, with your family, you know, how your family was reacting to your music, um, and like, I, sorry, this is a really shitty thing to bring up, but I know that, um, you had a couple of your parents pass away, and yeah, sorry for your, uh, I'm really, yeah, I, <laughs> is, is it okay that I'm bringing this up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's really, but like, you know, I know you talked a lot about that in your music, and like, how did that really, like, influence I know that like that's a huge impact on you um your world kind of changes when you lose your parents yeah um and I say your world because even though death is everywhere not everyone yeah. has specifically lost parents that's a that's a different yeah energy like you feel things in yourself change whether you're close to them or not there's a spiritual an emotional a mental and sometimes even physical change that occurs once you lose them. Exactly. 
So it, it just, I just see the world a, a bit clearer. Like yeah. I feel like having parents is beautiful, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. in in a realistic form, if you have caring and loving parents and they serve as somewhat of a mattress to real life, yeah. you know, if you get pushed out of a four story building, like your parents are there with the mattress to make sure you don't get hurt. Yeah not having parents is like you got to be careful along the edge because if you fall off you're not gonna get yeah so you know. yeah so definitely like yeah, definitely it's like you got to stay you know you know like you're on your own you know you you don't have that cushion i feel like you know that's what a lot of people don't understand about death is that even though you know it impacts you know the impact you know even though the person's already dead the impact is still felt after you know yeah that doesn't go away it's an emotional thing yeah. people will cry for years over their dog imagine you waking up yeah. one morning and your parents are just gone i know <laughs> i mean that's literally like my worst nightmare yeah yeah it's like and you know i put out something on a tweet um i said my work my biggest fear is knowing that someone that i'm spending time with it could be the last time because it's death been. is unexpected mm -hmm. yeah it's really like that yeah it's really like that um so, uh, what else is going to talk about? Um, how have you, do you feel like in the music industry, um, it's possible to, um, do business with your friends? Cause I know a lot of rappers say, a lot of people don't say, don't do business with your friends. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, only do business with your friends if they're like-minded, if yeah. they're in the same exact position whether risk taking or whatever if they're in that position then yes other than that then don't don't because yeah. then it's like you're supposed to be building together so if you're if you're just if one person throwing money in the pot and everyone else is taking out of the pot mm -hmm. the pot never fills if everyone is throwing five dollars in the pot then the pot builds and then whoever needs it at the time like i know like whatever but when it's working with friends it's supposed to be like that so for example with like myself and like the people i work with directly like mm -hmm. jeff like I'll make sure he's taken care of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're doing a video for me? Okay, I'll make sure you're taken care of. What do you mm -hmm. need? You know, okay, monetary, all right, I give you this. Oh, what is this? You need this? Okay, go, cool, I'll take care of that. Yeah. You know, that, or it, you're supposed to be working together, man. Like, my, you know what I'm saying? I have a close friend that's an animator, and he gave me a list of things that he needs in order for him to be able to optimize on what he wants to do. So it's like, yeah. okay. I need to set aside this amount of money to put towards you getting the machine you need to do the best of what you can. Mm -hmm. That's the only way this is gonna work. Mm -hmm. Like, exactly. yeah, I don't know, man. If you're hiring, if you're hiring your friends, make sure you hire your friends. Yeah. Don't you know what I'm saying? Don't let it be off no favor favor basis. Cause yeah. It, it gets really weird and murky. Like if you need a video and then you're like, oh yeah, can you do me a favor and then yeah. it's a favor and then you need the video in a week but you get it four months later, like. Yeah, because yeah. it's like when there's no money behind it, you know, there's no real incentive to get it, have a deadline. You that's know? how it is. So I think that's really like where like the monetary part comes in, where it's really important, you know, like, you know, like back what you're doing. But like, you know, it, you know, friends. yeah, just like splitting the profit. I feel like that's like yeah. one really good way to do it. Always, um, always. Yeah. All right. Sorry for that little intermission. My camera just. Uh, um, just cut out for a bit. My one of my last questions would be, um, you know, what was the process behind making your album? Uh, Sorry to bother you. You know, it just dropped a few days ago. Um, so, what was like that process like, coming up with the concept and like the recording process? Uh, it started with the song um, "Eternal Sunshine." Mm -hmm. Took that through its part. Um, I made that song about a year and like a half ago. Yeah. And I like just the flow. I was like, I oh shit, I found a pocket. This feels so good. This is yeah. this is this is what I want. Yeah. And then over time I just went through different beats because there's probably like thirty or forty songs that I went through. Yeah. And I just started recording different songs, different sounds, putting things on hold. And then I was like, Oh, this fits but this doesn't fit. This feels incomplete. This feels complete. Yeah. Oh, I found a bracket with this one, which is when I did Hospital. Then I came back and did Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And then Taraji and Sorry to Bother You were actually the two last songs that I did. Yeah. And then it was all just putting it together and then figuring out which ones tell which ones tell the story the most concise. Yeah. You know? 
and then it just shut down to like 11. Yeah. So I guess like another thing would be like, what was like your most, um, I guess, infuriating moment while recording? Like, what was a time where like, I guess like technical fa failures were at their worst? Like what was like the most difficult time recording you've ever had? Uh, <laughs> uh, the RAM on my PC has just decided to just die. Yeah. So I've been getting a lot of blue screen errors. Oh, yeah. So I was getting a lot of, like, in the middle of recording shutdowns. Yeah. And it's like, I have to transfer everything to another drive before all of this shit is yeah. gone. And I just happened to finish it right before my computer. It was like, all right, well, now I'm going to start randomly turning off. Yeah. Yeah, I've had it like with my, like I use Premiere Pro to edit a lot. Um, mm. I remember one time I was doing a school project. I edited almost the entire thing. It was this uh, documentary on Detroit gentrification actually. Mm. And so I made that for a school project and my computer just shut off. And, and this is what I really say, like, you know, back up everything you have, you know, back it up. Um, Please get an external hard drive. Yeah. Get like two or three. Yeah. And, and like, I, I wouldn't necessarily say trust the cloud. Yeah. But get it physical. Yeah, I yeah. have. Yeah, I have hard drives. Like, right before I came out here to DC, um, I backed up. I had to wipe all my SD cards because um, they were almost all full from stuff because I haven't cleaned out my SD cards in a while. Mm -hmm. So I backed that up on my computer and backed it up on an external hard drive. I backed it up twice to make sure that I had all my backups mm -hmm. and especially because if I lost all that footage and all those photos <laughs> that, <it'll> be <laughs> that's, that's two works of, that's two years of work gone it'd be I, crazy yeah I have a I have a hard drive with a broken needle right now that I'm like mm -hmm. desperately trying to get fixed yeah because it just has like everything from like 2014 to like 2016 on yeah it. yeah I had a my old computer it died but luckily I was able to take it to a um uh we were able to take it to a uh, computer repair shop and they were able to extract the hard drive and put all that on there and I actually had a another computer that I was setting up like it was like right as I was setting up the computer I had got and I was I was hoping that you know I have two computers you know so that you know like one of my friends came over and wanted to like work on something we could both work on two computers but now I just got one but I'm just thankful that I have, I have all, one I have one I have <laughs> and also I have all my files so yeah um I guess like losing your files is devastating oh my god exactly <laughs> yeah it yeah I don't, I yeah, I think some people don't understand how <laughs> important how important files are. I'm getting flashbacks. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, I had a cat destroy my computer. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Did it like piss on it? Or? It like it was on the t it was like on the table, and it like jumped up. It like jumped on the screen, and the screen like fell back, and oh, like I was like, oh, that's my God. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, one time I did this photo shoot and I was going through uh, deleting a bunch of pictures and I thought all the pictures were way too zoomed in, but then I realized it was my camera that was zoomed in. Oh. So I thought, <laughs> so, but luckily I was able to lock, because they have that feature on the SD card where you can lock it, mm. I locked it, I took it home and I was able to use the software to get all that back. So I'm, Good. yeah, yeah, so thankfully to like digital stuff, like there is like a, there is like, you know, there is like, a time you know before it gets overridden by other files mm -hmm. you still can't get like that's why when you're like if you accidentally do something like you format your sd card and you realize that you forgot to back up your files like do not do anything with the sd card yeah, so yeah just put it to the side and act like it doesn't exist yeah exactly that's what i did so i guess to wrap up the interview um it is getting a little late um but yeah i guess to wrap up the interview um one of my questions would be you know like what is your message to you know upcoming artists and like what is your message to um, you know just aspiring artists or people in general? Then? Um, keep going and make sure you have a good support group. Like, and I'm saying that for especially mentally because the, 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 I I can't tell you I can't tell you what's gonna come up in your path because shit is just so random. You know what I'm saying like going back into a little bit earlier about the passing away of like my mom like I was on tour I was in LA mm -hmm. and I got the call was like hey by the way just letting you know and things like that will happen so you have to make sure that 
on your journey while you're doing things you make sure that you're you're with people that you can trust so you can leave your stuff in the hands of people Mm -hmm. that won't fuck you over exactly learn how to if you're a musician your rapper learn how to mix learn how Mm -hmm. to master learn how to make your own beats it's important just in case you need to like flip samples and make your remake a beat because a producer doesn't want to work with you or some shit like that yeah you know uh if you're working on film and things like that, make sure your name is on everything. Exactly. Your name is on everything. Don't let people be like, yo, I'll trade you for clout. I'll trade you for... Di-. Never. Fuck that. Unless never you actually like them, work with people if you like them. Yeah. If exactly. you work with them for free, work with them because you like them. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like that like whole thing, like never work for exposure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never. Fuck that work for... And, 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 and yo, fuck, fuck pay to play. Don't pay to play. Dude, never... Nah pay to play like you're doing like a open mics cool what they charge like five dollars for you to go up there and do your shit that's cool but if they're talking about oh we want you to do a show we want you to pay like three hundred dollars four hundred dollars a month do not do that yeah do not do that trust me 15 minutes and two songs you're losing everything you're not yeah. gaining anything you're not gaining a bunch of new fans that's not how that works yeah you know when you gain fans by interacting by connecting by doing shows consistently you're hopping on one big show you know it's 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 not unless it's live recorded and you're on that bill and you are a highlight along with the artist mm-hmm. you're gonna get washed yeah. under there as another local don't do mm-hmm. it yeah so i just like to say like thank you for coming out doing this interview uh shout out to uh liam bush otherwise known as wiggy for setting up this interview um shout out to just like you know aerospace um Thanks yeah for having me. yeah 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 no problem um you know, make sure you go check out his music i'll link all that stuff in the description down below his new album uh sorry to bother you just dropped available on all platforms i'll be in the description down below make sure to check me out too those links will be in the description down below and i'll see you guys in my next interview Holla.